Okay, this is my final video on stand up versus ground and pound. Alright? As I said before, the last two videos, I have no ground game. So, since I have no ground game, I can only tell you what I've learned with my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the Army. Now, as I said in the other video, before I stopped it, you don't know what's going to work in a fight until you apply it. Now, I say this because, as I said, I've watched a fuck ton of videos over the last three days while I was doing my homework. I still have more homework to do. I'll cover it all tomorrow. Hopefully. These guys I watch, I have respect for them all. They're all having rivalries with each other, and I'm not here for that. I want to make martial art movies because martial arts makes me happy. I also want to make martial arts movies because there are no people like me who are mixed that are running the streets of martial art movies. And more importantly, I want to make martial art movies so I can teach Kung Fu for free. My style of Kung Fu, that is. My style is very adaptable, and you can use it in everyday life. Because if you're not using martial arts in everyday life, you're not truly a martial artist. I'm just kidding. Anyway, you don't know what will work in a fight until you apply it. And a lot of these guys are doing demos, cross-checking the other guys to, to prove that they're right and the other guys are wrong or whatever. And I don't have a problem with that. Because if they want to beef, that's fine. I'm just here to be the best martial artist I can be. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to show off. I'm not here to put anyone down. That's not my job. As a martial artist, the two things that I honor the most is the word honor and respect. Granted, my mouth is a little bit foul. Alright, so I'm an honest man. There are a lot of things in fights. There's choke holes. There's choke holes. Alright, this one, personally, for me, has been a little bit more effective when their head's right here. And I can do this. And this one, it works, but you really want to be able to reel that thing in there. And if the guy's neck might be a little bit too big, you don't have to work as hard. But if you can get your elbow, like, like this is great. But if you can get it to where his, your body is tucked, and his neck is in there, and your head's up against his, then you're good. Then I would also suggest while you have him like that, that you should probably put your knee in his back. Not the small, but in the center of his back. Yes, this sounds brutal, and I'm sorry if it's brutal for a lot of people who don't understand the concept of we're fighting. I'm not playing games with you. I'm trying to keep you from breaking my goddamn back, so I'm going to break yours. And that's brutal and it's wrong, and I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry if it's going to save your fucking life, okay? So if I got you in this chokehold, or if I got you in this chokehold, or if I got you in this chokehold, which is my favorite, which is from wrestling, it's the Cobra Clutch, where this is just a sleeper, and this is the Cobra Clutch. If I have you in one of those, I promise you, since I'm going to be behind you, because I have never applied it to someone being in front of them, but if I'm behind you and I'm putting you in it, this knee, or this knee, is going in your back. And the true reason behind that is the simple fact that I'm 5'3". Okay? And so I'm probably on your back like a spider monkey because most of the people I've ever fought have always been five, seven, six feet or better. I've never fought anybody who's been five, one, or five, two. I've always fought in people bigger than me. So if we're in a rumble and I get lucky enough to get past your defenses to where I can get you in this chokehold, my knee is going in your back because that's what I was taught to do. Now, am I right for doing that? If we're in the ring, probably not. If we're on the streets, there are no rules, and I'm going to do what I have to do to survive, and you're either going to deal with it or you're going to break. Simple as that. Because we're both not trying to get fucked up. I'm definitely not trying to get fucked up. I'm already fucked up. I'm 45. I have a bad hip. I can't play games with you young whippersnappers. If we're out in the streets, and I got you down in this move, and my knee is going in your back. And it doesn't really matter. Some people prefer to put it down here. I'm short. My legs will probably already be up here. So I'm driving this knee, which this knee, if it's closer, right into your center of your back. Right there. See that? Right there. Right dead in the center of your back. All right? Now the reason for that is because I know that there's a pressure point and it spreads out through your shoulder blades. All right, and I'm going to use pressure point tactics on you in a fight 
in the streets. Man, the UFC, I've read some of their rules and that's just not allowed. So, <laughs> I would definitely get my ass kicked in the UFC because I'm a pressure pointer. All right? And the reason why I say that is because, all right, when I took Kempo, I learned that everywhere there's a joint, there's a pressure point, and you better not hesitate to use them. It's the same thing when I learned a tiny bit of Mantis, because I haven't had the whole Mantis style, because there's no Mantis teachers in Charlottesville. But from what I learned, you can combine Mantis with Kempo, and you can also combine Mantis with Snake, and you can strike in these Kempo targets, inner elbow, your little diamonds in here, your little diamonds in the back, and this one spot up in the front, and then all the indentions and shit. If you can strike those places in a fight while well, everything's going on, because real fights only last five to ten minutes. Sanctioned fights last long because they bring, bring money. Real fights in the street, five minutes max. Three to five. If you're in a fight in the street and it lasts ten minutes, y'all are both good. Or aces. So I would tell a person, you know, if I'm going to teach a person, I would tell them that you want to be well-rounded in everything. You don't want to be stuck being a ground and pounder, and you don't want to be a stand-up guy without having some ground game. So, I walk the man the little middle line because I'm a stand-up fighter. I have no ground game. I have admitted to that like three times in the last two videos, and I just admitted to it again. But, I also know how to get away from a ground and pounder in the event that they're scooping me up to slam me. You know, I, I like to say this because it's more truth than fake. If you're already in the air, you are not defenseless if you stay calm. I've had this situation before. So if you stay calm, you can strike back. And they're picking you up. So when they're picking you up, you can elbow down in here, you can elbow them in the neck, you can elbow them over here, you can elbow them here, you can poke them in the eye, you can grab these little pressure points under here, the ones behind the ears. You can do damn near anything as long as you do the one thing that's the most important in the fight. Stay calm. You lose your head, it doesn't come matter if you're a stand-up fighter or a ground and pounder. Once this goes ballistic and you're crazy, you've lost. It's the same thing with most sensation. With everybody has a plan until they hit the mouth. You know, you need to be able to snap back into your plan mode once you're hit. 20% of people in a fight cannot do that. 30 might. 70 can recover faster. But then if they're blinded by rage, then it doesn't work for them. So you have to be one of those guys that if you get hit, you have to have your synaptics well enough that when you recover, that you're good. Most importantly, if you're going to fight, you need to cover your head, your throat, and your guts. Not that cover. This cover's a really stupid move. So, un unless you extend it. You know, if you're out here, you might have a chance. But, you know, I tell people if you're going to fight, boxing style only. Boxing style, but add kung fu. Bob and weave, you know, boom, boom, you know. That's fine. But this, you've given away too much. And they'll be like, what? You're giving away too much. I was like, okay, this is the beginning of a crane. Or an iron butterfly. It actually really is a style. Don't ask. I don't know it. I know a couple of pieces of it, but I don't know it, know it. Anyway, you go in here. You go into the crane. You've given away the fact that you know martial arts. And that person, if they know that you're going to do the crane, and they're going to throw a punch, and your crane, your strikes here and your blocks here, or your strikes here and your block, and then you're going to grab... And do um, the chick from the second Tekken, June. And you're going to go here and twist and step and throw them down. Okay, that works fine if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing and you're an improvisation expert like myself, you strike the closest target. So block, strike. Or block, break the elbow, slide up there, which means you're sliding up here. And you hit them somewhere that's going to put the fight to an end. And if you're not a good fighter, that's exactly what you do. If you're a great fighter, that's also exactly what you do. So did you end the fight swiftly. I'm James Williams. I want you guys to ponder, ground and pound, well-rounded, stand up. Those are three styles that you will encounter in most fights. If this guy's a ground and pounder, I need to be ready. 
this guy's a stand-up fighter, I need to be ready. So if he's well-rounded like me, we're going to have a GFT. And for those who are in the Army, that means a good fucking time. You guys have a great day, night, wherever you be. I'm James Williams. This is Company Number 2, BC and you.